Russian propagandists and military Z channels report that the Ukrainian authorities are allegedly preparing to hold a referendum on the incorporation of the territory of the Kursk region into Ukraine. This was reported on his page on the social network X by the well-known Russian journalist and blogger Rustem Adagamov, citing information from Russian war correspondents who are spreading this news. Recently, former Russian parliament member Ilya Ponomarev stated that there are members of the Russian opposition who are ready to come to Kursk Oblast and participate in the creation of new power structures in the territories that Ukraine currently controls. Adagamov emphasized that there is no official confirmation of the information from Kiev yet. According to information disseminated by the Russians, the referendum in the new territories may be held on September the 6th. This game can be played by two people, yes, the blogger noted in a comment to the post. Social media users are actively commenting on the information. Earlier, Russia, having occupied several areas of the Kherson, Zaporizhia, Donetsk and Luhansk regions, decided to hold a so-called referendum falsifying the results on the basis of which it declared the annexation of Ukrainian regions. As Ukrainian forces pushed into Kursk, many Ukrainian commentators began to highlight previously little discussed historical facts. Ukrainians constituted the majority in numerous districts of what is now southwestern Russia before Stalin's genocidal Holodomor famine of 1932 to 1933. At the same time, historical claims alone cannot dictate geopolitics. Forceful border changes could lead to endless conflict and Ukrainian officials have made it clear that Ukraine does not seek to alter internationally recognized borders or claim Russian territory. The Kremlin has long justified its territorial ambitions by invoking the need to reclaim historical lands. This rhetoric reached a fever pitch before the 2022 invasion of Ukraine when Russian President Vladimir Putin penned a lengthy treaty on Ukrainian history as he perceived it. In this document, Putin asserted that parts of Ukraine rightfully belonged to Russia and went so far as to deny the very existence of a distinct Ukrainian nation. He reiterated these arguments in a history-laden speech on the 23rd of February 2022, attempting to legitimize the impending invasion. However, the events unfolding in Kursk Oblast, a region in western Russia, starkly illustrate the flaws in his narrative. When Ukrainian troops advanced into the area on the 6th of August 2024, they were greeted by many locals speaking Ukrainian, a poignant reminder of the region's Ukrainian heritage. This ironic turn of events underscores the fallacy of Russia's oversimplified claims about historical ownership. The Ukrainian offensive in Kursk region succeeded thanks to electronic warfare blitz that blinded Russian reconnaissance drones. Russia responds with drones immune to jamming. As Forbes writes, this is the first time such a weapon has been used on the battlefield and also a kind of warning for most countries that rely heavily on jamming to protect themselves from terrorist drone attacks. FPV drones need radio communication with the operator. So on the front line, you can see many jammers that knock out radio noise on selected frequencies. Effective electronic warfare means create a safe bubble in the region of 50 to 100 meters. So UAVs constantly change operating frequencies and the jammers themselves are updated. That's why a blitz attack like Kursk is needed with a long lead time to detect all frequencies and enough jamming to block everything in the area and stop all drones for a while, the journalists explain. Radio communication requires line of sight and during the attack itself, the drones dive quite low, so at the last second, interference appears in the video signal which impairs visibility. One solution to the jamming problem is terminal guidance using artificial intelligence. The operator locks on a target at a certain distance and the drone pursues it even if communication is lost. These systems are already being deployed in small numbers by both sides. Another approach is wire guidance. The drone reels in a fiber optic cable as it moves, similar to wire guided missiles like the TOW, the article says. Ukraine recorded a Russian prototype of a fiber optic drone back in March and recently Russian telegram channels showed footage of the use 
of Prince Vandal Novgorodsky drones in the Kursk region. They are said to be immune to electronic warfare. Forbes previously reported that the German company HiCat is testing the HCX drone in Ukraine, which is resistant to radio frequency jamming and detection because it communicates with the operator via fiber optic cable. Back in March, Ukrainian developers announced the appearance of a fiber optic FPV drone called Banderik Strichka, 